Hi there, welcome to No Nonsense Whiskey. My name is Vim Pierre On today's episode, we're breaking the Thursday tradition a little bit to bring you a brand new release. And I wanted to get this out now because this is going to set out pretty quickly, I think. So I wanted to get this out to you this weekend to tell you about this new bottling that's coming from the Cotswolds, my local distillery, one of my favourite distilleries, and a distillery that you know that I love shining from the Rousers for. Now, they sent me this bottle over here to kind of celebrate their latest release, which is a Distillery Club exclusive, which sounds like you need to be part of a, a paid kind of subscription, but it isn't. Um, it's actually really just a mailing list with some benefits, you know, so you can go up there, you know, you sign up with your email address and whatnot, and you part of a club then and you get discounts and you get some birthday gifts if you want, uh, and key, key, you get access to this whiskey. It'll only be available to people that are on that club, basically. So um, there'll be a link in the description below that has like no affiliates or anything like that, but that'll just take you directly to where you need to go and sign up if you're interested in copying a bottle of this. Now, a couple of key stats. Now, the, the name of it, which you'll have seen down below, is the Spanish Oak Matured, 50%. Um, I don't know exactly what the RRP is gonna be, but I'm given to believe it's 100 pounds. So it's not a cheap whiskey by any stretch, but um, a lot of their releases recently have been 100 pounds. So it's well within the Cotswolds normal remit, I would say, uh, in comparison to their core releases, let's say. Their special releases tend to be around about that sort of mark. So, you know, if you're a fan of the Cotswolds, then you're gonna be a fan of that, I guess, basically. But yeah, so this one here is a, a mixture of Oloroso, uh, kind of Spanish oak, had some Oloroso in it, and then it's their, their signature style, which is that first fill, red wine uh, barrels and then their uh, ex-bourbon barrel. So it's, it's pretty kind of like typical in their wheelhouse with that extra kind of sherry element. The interesting thing, I guess, is that typically speaking, I don't really get on with sherried whiskies, let's say. So I'll be interested to see how I get on with this and uh, how uh, you know exciting I think it is. But let's get into it and see what we've actually got on the nose, shall we? You know, this is non-chill filtered natural colored as well. So you can see it's had a nice, a nice effect on it. I can't imagine you know, most of the most of the spirit that comes out of Cotswolds is going to be sort of three, four, five years old. So it's probably in that wheelhouse. I don't know for sure exactly on age, but let's get onto the nose and see what we've got. Now, the thing I'm really enjoying about this, typically when you get a uh, kind of heavily sherried whiskey, let's say the typical tasting notes you're going to get are uh, juicy fruits, dried fruits, you know, those kind of like raisins, sultanas, Christmas pudding. I'm not getting that on this. What I'm getting is bags of vanilla, a little bit of kind of like fig notes, but they're kind of on the juicier side rather than on the drier side. And a little bit of a kind of like nutmeg and cinnamon on the back end. So no, it's not a million miles away, but it's certainly not in that kind of like big, bold sherry flavors that I'm not a fan of, I have to say. So for me, I'm grateful for this nose. Let's try on the palette. Mm. Now this is what... This is where this whiskey really shines is on the palate. It's got a really interesting palate versus the nose. The nose is very subtle and understated, whereas the palate is quite kind of zingy and alive, let's say. Now I'm getting some odd things on this. I'm getting some kind of like orangey notes on it and then some more of those kind of typical tropical flavors that you're getting from Cotswolds, generally speaking. Interestingly enough, on the back end of it, I'm getting a little bit of spearmint, just a touch. Nothing major, but it's not something I'm used to experiencing with Cotswold, so that's a kind of nice new inflection, let's say, because, you know, it could have just been the same as all the other stuff, couldn't it, at the end of the day, but it's, I think it's actually quite different. You know, you, it's got that typical Cotswolds tropical style to it, that fruitiness that we like from Cotswolds, and there's a few extra little points to it on the nose, those kind of like nutmeggy cinnamon notes, and on the palate, that kind of like, I'm calling it a kind of spearmint vibe. On the website, they call it like a star anise vibe, but it's it's in that wheelhouse, you know, that kind of that interesting spice on the back end that I'm not used to getting from Cotswolds, and I'm enjoying that change. One more sip. Mm. It finishes medium, you know, it isn't um, totally huge, but it evolves, you know, the, once the juiciness has disappeared, you're getting more of that kind of mintiness come through that's really quite lovely, and uh, that propagates out throughout the back end into more peppery and more cinnamon notes on the back end but again as I always say with those kind of notes it just makes me want to dive back in and have another sip but yeah now um, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I think that £100 is like easy spending money it isn't it isn't for me um, thankfully they sent me this bottle so that's that's all good 
But um, yeah, it's it's a tough sell. Hundred pounds is a lot of money to most of us. Um, what I will say is, if you are a big fan of Cotswolds, then a good time to to jump on this. You know, it's it's limited. It's it's there's three thousand five hundred bottles apparently. So I think there's plenty of it to go around. So I wouldn't panic too much. But um, well worth signing up to that list anyway, because then you're going to keep up to date with kind of all Cotswoldsy stuff. But yeah, if if you haven't tried a Cotswolds before, you know a lot of my international audience might have only just started seeing these on shelf. Don't worry about trying to get hold of this thing straight away. You know, definitely go and check out their core release first, and definitely the founders' choice. That's a, a really stunning whiskey to try. Um, but yeah, don't worry too much about this. Hundred pounds is a lot of money. I'm going to say it again. But yeah, if it's again, if it's in your your kind of Cotswolds wheelhouse. Then and you don't really feel too worried about spending that sort of money. Absolutely, 100% get it. It's a it's it's a good quality Cotswolds with a little bit of interesting extras to it that uh, will make it a valid addition to your shelf. I'll say cheers to you, and I'll see you again on more videos.